Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. I hope you've been enjoying the 12 home theater tours that I've been sharing over the past 12 days. We've been doing one each day at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then at 8 p.m. like today, we're sharing kind of my thoughts on that particular home theater of the day. But today is a little different. I completely forgot to do a reaction video for Rad's home theater that I shared with you yesterday. So Rad, my sincere apologies. We had a crazy busy day with family yesterday, about five hours of driving in total, and just literally completely forgot to do it. So I'm filming this one today, and I'll probably even do Steve's later on this evening as well to do both of those. But today we're gonna to be talking about the video I shared with you yesterday. If you didn't get a chance to check out Rad's video, I'll have a link to it down in the description with an entire playlist of the 12 videos that I've shared, as well as the reaction videos for each one of those home theaters. And so Rad actually has two areas uh, for a home theater. So he's got upstairs, kind of in their main living area, and he's got some small Polk Audio speakers. He's got an OLED display above a beautiful fireplace. And you can kind of see it's uh, definitely, he's got young children in the family. He's got the kids' toys over here on the side. And he's got this really cool little two-channel setup with a project uh, record player. And he's got some other means of being able to kind of share and stream uh, various media and, uh, you know, in particular, two-channel listening. And so right off the bat, you see this really cool display of vinyl records. And so it's really obvious. I mean, if you don't know this family, when you walk in, you're like, all right, these guys love to listen to music. And I love how Rad shared that it's more than just him. It's him and his wife. They both love sitting down, listening to music. Um, they love displaying even their favorite artists and records and albums. And so I just thought that was a really cool way of doing that. And that was something that they built together, something that they built kind of DIY, which, you know, anytime that you can build something on your own, you're going to save a ton of money by doing so. So they've got a great little setup upstairs. And then we headed downstairs. And as we walk downstairs, you immediately realize, okay, we're going into something different because you've got the movie posters on the wall. You've got the movie memorabilia. And then as we got to the bottom of the stairs and started around the corner, I see this cool little sign is like, welcome youth man. Honestly, guys, those little things like that just warm my heart. I just thought it was super cool. Um, every, every home that I visited during this trip, they were incredibly, incredibly just welcoming and hospitable. Many of them fed us. And so super thanks to you guys, including, uh, um, Rad and his wife. And they actually hooked us up with some killer, killer food, man. It was like a, a local restaurant that, that, uh, Tony really enjoyed. It was a Chinese restaurant. Woo, it was so good, so good. So appreciate that. Rad and I headed down to the, the theater room and as we rounded the corner, of course you got this sweet little section for all this candy, man. And I love how Rad said, yeah, you know, the kids love their candy. I don't know about you guys, but I love candy, man. So I wouldn't be able to keep a ton of candy there because I'd be eating it all, unfortunately. Um, but it was cool to be able to have that display so when guests come down, they're about to watch a movie or when family comes in to watch a movie together, they can grab their snack, grab their popcorn, and then head into the theater. And I love even just the fact that you just got this curtain. I mean, they could have had it just open, you know, an open display there and just walk right into the theater room. But it kind of gives this like dramatic interest, like, here we go, man. Now it's movie time. So we walk in the room and right to the right is a beautiful, huge uh, acoustic transparent screen. And I'm like, I love seeing a big screen. I mean, one thing that I've always enjoyed with home theater is the fact of having a big projection screen. Yes, you can have a home theater with an OLED. Yes, you can have a home theater with an LED. But let's just face it, you know, about as big as you're going to get is about an 85 inch, um, roughly. I mean, I know they make bigger ones, but affordability, most people are going to pick up, you know, maybe a 77 inch, uh, maybe an 82 inch, some, somewhere around that, that range. 
but you're not going to get this massively immersive experience like you do at Rad's house. I mean, he's got this beautiful screen. It's almost wall to wall, um, you know, as far as, especially like your peripheral. And he's got two rows of seating. So he's got nice theater seating up front. And uh, his wife was like, look, if we're going to do kind of some uh, theater seating, I get some input in that and she wanted the uh kind of a sofa style in the middle so you can kind of cuddle and snuggle and then you know kick the kids to those out two seats um, but then in the back i thought it was really dope that he and his family chose to go with like traditional those old school theater seats and and he said that he picked those up at a local cinema um, maybe they were going out of business or something or maybe they were upgrading but I think he got them super cheap. And so the thing is, is one thing I love about featuring a lot of these home theaters, such as Rad's, is the different ways that they were able to still provide an incredible home theater experience, but not break the bank. Now, of course, we've shared some really nice high-end um, and even expensive home theaters. And a lot of you guys, and myself included, will never have something that large or that scale but even in those many of them did the work themselves they they tried to figure out ways that they could save some money without just hiring a contractor coming in doing all the work and just costing a ton of money and so rad looked for ways that he could um you know save some money but still have an incredible theater experience and, and let's face it i mean i know in my theater room i've got two nice rows of theater seating but rarely do those chairs back there ever get used. And so even having that second row of seating that are just kind of your typical non-reclining kind of chairs, um, honestly, it's probably pretty stinking ideal because if you do have guests over, you know, you got plenty of seating back there, uh, just put the friends you don't like back there, <laughs> I guess, you know, put, the, put the, uh, uh, the ones that you love up front in the nice, cushy, comfy seats. His room has several different brands represented. So he's got Paradigm speakers up front. He's got two towers and a center channel. And, uh, and that is directly behind this massive acoustic transparent screen. And the good thing about having an acoustic transparent screen is being able to have your speakers directly behind where the action is taking place on screen. So when we're watching a movie in, in a, a demo in his room, you know, as action is happening on the screen, we're hearing exactly where it's supposed to be heard. The sound isn't coming from above the screen or below the screen. It's just perfectly placed. For subwoofers, he's got dual JTR Captivator RS1s, which are tuned for about 10 hertz. And so these are able to handle some really, really low frequencies with a lot of authority and just sound phenomenal for both two channel listening as well as for movies. Um, another really cool thing that he did that I also did in my theater room is when he turns off the lights, he can light up and illuminate behind the screen to give this reveal effect. And so he can reveal what's behind the screen his three paradigm speakers. Um, the subwoofers are a little bit difficult to see, um, but that's because there's just not a light directly on them. But just super cool effect to be able to, you know, have guests walk in or maybe, you know, you're sitting down for a movie and you kind of show that either before the movie or maybe after the movie. It's just kind of cool to be able to do that, especially if you don't have easy access behind your screen. That's, to me, I think that's a really, really good thing that, that you might want to consider in your home theater setup. And then right on the bottom, he mentions that he built that stage down there and it was just looks super clean. Uh, that was one thing I really noticed about Rad's room is that his room is just very, very clean, very tidy. Um, everything is in its place. But this bottom um, stage had this beautiful blue LED light underneath and just really, really adds to the character of his room. Then over on the front right, he's got this really nice um, audio rack. And so you open it up and he's got all of his equipment nice and tidy. That's something I don't really have. I've got kind of more of a standard cabinet that all of my equipment goes behind. And so having that rack in there, one thing that's nice is it's got a glass front door, but all of the sound, any like fans that are in there from the AVR or the computer, all of that sound gets exited in the rear of that rack. And so you don't have to worry about, you know, the fan noise being able to be heard 
during those quiet scenes during a movie. He's got plenty of amplification with a big beefy power, I'm sorry, big beefy uh, parasound amplifier on the bottom. He's got an Anthem uh, process or uh, AVR. One thing that I really appreciated with Rad's setup is he, like many others during this trip, pretty much everybody on this trip, had all their media kind of organized either on a home theater PC or in Rad's case, he's using Plex to, to kind of stream all of his music and play all of his uh, movies. And he was even able to create a custom demo, which was super cool to be able to just go through. This is my youth band playlist of songs that we're gonna play and then, then movie clips that we're gonna play. And so that again is one of the things that I want to incorporate into my home theater as well. For side surrounds or rear surrounds, he's running JTR uh, speakers, the Noesis, I think the 110 uh, surrounds and had a great looking projector. It was a Sony uh, model, uh, had a beautiful picture on his, I forget exactly how big his screen was, probably 130 inch or maybe even a little bit more, but just a great, great picture quality, great image quality on that. Um, and then also notice that Rad has acoustic panels throughout his room. And I remember back when I first built my theater room, I didn't have any acoustic treatment. And I didn't realize that, you know, without acoustic treatment, most rooms aren't going to sound good. You can put the best equipment in there, but if you don't treat the room, then you're going to really have a lot of echo. And that echo can definitely impact the the dialogue clarity or the clarity of the dialogue in, you know, when you're watching a movie or even listening to music. And so he has panels on the side walls. You know, he didn't really need one on the right wall because that's where that curtain was. But on the left wall, he had acoustic panels. Then even on the ceiling, he's got kind of what we call a cloud acoustic panel. And so that takes care of that first reflection point off your ceiling. And so, you know, I believe he made those as well. And so again, just trying to figure out ways that you can build a home theater without having to take out a second mortgage on your home. I commend anybody that has the ability to, to build and to construct and, and to kind of save some money in that regard. And then of course, all of his lighting is controlled as well. Um, that's always handy when you're able to control and dim your lights. And I love how he has it set up to where when he hits play, all the lights go out and it is movie time. Rad, you've got an incredible home theater. Thanks so much for sharing it with us and, and just allowing us an opportunity just to see some of the creative ways that you have taken your basement and created just this incredible movie experience for your family first, um, but then also to friends and other people that might come and have an opportunity to demo your setup. Well guys, if you've been enjoying these home theater tours, I'll have a link down in the description to all 12 of these as well as the reaction videos such as this one. And if you're interested in having the possibility of your home theater featured here on the channel, make sure you head over to hometheatertours.com and submit yours. Well, I hope you have an incredible week. God bless, and we'll catch you in the next video.